Okay, good morning year 11. I thought I would do a screencast on our essay question for this week. So we're going to cover this in class. So I'd encourage you to, you know, take notes and really try and engage with this question on your own in class. And then this is a supplementary resource. So once you've done the work in class, I want you to come and watch this screencast and take notes or add to your notes. You've got access to these slides as well. So you might like to print out the slides, and maybe write notes on the slide. And the idea is that this is one of your practice essay questions, okay? So a practice essay question. It's really important that you have a go at completing at least one draft. So prejudice is a core issue in the text to kill a mockingbird and 12 angry men, preventing some characters from accessing justice. To what extent do you, do you agree? So we've talked a lot about prejudice with our weekly readings. All right, and we've talked a lot about justice. So here we're saying that prejudice, so preconceived ideas that um, exist in the society of Maycomb when we're talking about To Kill a Mockingbird and preconceived ideas that the jurors bring into the jury room in 12 Angry Men prevent some characters from accessing justice. And when we're saying some characters, we're thinking maybe about the accused in 12 Angry Men and Tom Robinson in To Kill a Mockingbird. So if we unpack the question, it looks a bit like this. So remember, prejudice is a preconceived opinion that is not based on actual reason or experience. So the prejudice that the society of making hold against African-American people such as Tom Robinson is not based on a good reason or experience, just as the prejudice that people such as Juror 7 hold against the accused and people like them who live in slums is not based on any kind of experience, okay? It's just an idea that they have. All right, and then we said is a core issue. So we're saying that prejudice is one of the big concerns, okay? Because the word core means it's important. Um, in the text, Kill a Mockingbird and Tom Bingleman, preventing, all right, that the preconceived ideas of the jurors and the town and the town is making actually get in the way of justice, all right? And then we've got accessing, so being able to have the opportunity to get justice so that some characters in these books don't even have the opportunity because prejudice prevents them from even getting to this point where they have the opportunity to access it. Um, justice, and we're talking here about legal justice. I think I talked about this in my class last week. The fact that we have to be really clear about what legal justice is. So for Tom Robinson, legal justice is the right to clear his name. And for the accused, legal justice is the right to a fair trial. So to what extent, the question asks, so do you feel that prejudice gets in the way of fairness and equality? If the answer is yes, it does you don't have to say it always gets in the way they're asking to what extent so you can say in some cases more than the others in to kill a mockingbird prejudice gets in the way more than in 12 angry men because of course in 12 angry men justice is achieved okay but in to kill a mockingbird justice isn't achieved so bear that in mind you can have a difference of opinion between the two so what do you think our paragraphs are going to be on? Here's my suggestion. You might have your own ideas, and that's perfectly okay. Your teachers might teach you something different as well, which is okay. But this is just three basic ideas that I came up with. So this is sort of like your base paragraphs for anything to do with prejudice and justice. So I said, you go, prejudice, justice, and the legal system. All right, so I've given you topic sentences down the side here. So you might want to write them down. You might want to make use of them. And I'd really encourage you to handwrite them, not to just read them off here. Because, of course, if you handwrite something, you're more likely to remember it. You might also like to print these slides out and pin them up, you know, on your bedroom wall or on the bathroom mirror or something if you're finding you're having trouble remembering key ideas. So prejudice. What do we see in terms of prejudice? What are our examples? Where in the text is prejudice evident? Are there specific points? And prejudice does stand in the way. I've written here. That should be a full stop, not a slash. I've made a statement. You could disagree with that. You can say, no way, prejudice doesn't stand in the way. That's totally fine as long as you can support your point of view. But I'm suggesting that prejudice does stand in the way. Body paragraph two is justice. In both texts, justice depends on individuals having courage. All right. Justice is sometimes achieved when individuals show courage. I probably should have added the fact that it should say um, justice is achieved, you know, only sometimes or justice isn't achieved despite courage, of course, and then the legal system. 
The court system, unfortunately, is not always enough to uphold justice. That's the reality. Sometimes the court system on its own doesn't do enough, okay? And you've got your topic sentences here. So I'd really encourage you to think about these ideas and maybe to write these dot points down, okay? So then we move on. and We've got our introduction. So it's really important that you think about the correct structure of your introduction, okay? Because it's really quite specific. Introductions. Introductions are really important. It's the first impression that the person uh, reading your work is going to get. And that year, it's the first impression that you're going to give an examiner. So really try and stick to the structure here. So I've tried to break it down for you. Opening sentence, reword the question, outline three arguments, clearly answer and refer back to the question. This is the structure of an introduction. And this starts when you're in year seven and it goes right through until uni, okay? So opening sentence, Harper Lee's novel To Kill a Mockingbird and Reginald Rose's play, 12 Angry Men, both seek to challenge the notions of justice in American society. This is quite general. Then we get really specific, all right? We try and reword the question. Then, of course, we're outlining our three arguments just as we did before. And then we come back to the question at the bottom. All right. It is evident in To Kill a Mockingbird and 12 Angry Men that prejudice does stand in the way of Tom Robinson and the accused accessing justice, despite the courageous actions of Juror 8 and Atticus Finch. I'm saying that even though the accused in 12 Angry Men eventually um, is found not guilty, prejudice still stands in the way because if it wasn't for the actions of Juror 8, that boy would have been sent to his death. So think about what examples could you use. So maybe uh, if you're watching this at home, just pause it and go, okay, let's look at my notes. What have I got as an example for prejudice? And this is where you go back to your weekly readings, okay? Go back to those readings we gave you and find out what have you got as prejudice, all right? Where are your examples? Or maybe you've got some notes you did in class. All right, same thing goes for justice and the legal system. Or maybe if you're feeling pretty confident, just sit here and think to yourself, okay, my example of prejudice into Kill a Mockingbird is how the mob, all right, tell Atticus that they can't necessarily protect, protect Tom Robinson. And I've chosen to use this because I think it's an example of how prejudice gets in the way of Tom Robinson being treated fairly. Or... In 12 Angry Men, an example of prejudice is the fact that several of the jurors refer to the accused as one of them and talk about him growing up in the slum, and as far as they're concerned, that means that they don't deserve a fair trial. He doesn't deserve a fair trial, sorry. So can you do that on your own? You should be getting to the point where you can. If you can't, then you need to spend some more time going back through your notes, maybe going through the uh, sample essay questions that your teachers might have given you okay and of course also those annotations in your book they're really important because you should have annotated your book so you should be familiar with some of these key ideas already in case you didn't come up with anything on your own on the previous uh, slide I've given you some examples all right so you can go through each of these and you can break it down so prejudice Atticus tell a scout you never really understand a person all right that really famous quote um, juror 8, the boy's been kicked around all his life. I think maybe we owe him a few words. So juror eight's trying to break down prejudice. Uh, justice, so Atticus says that each lawyer gets one case in their lifetime but warns that it, things won't necessarily be great. Um, 12 Angry Men, no jury can declare a man guilty unless it's sure. Uh, in To Kill a Mockingbird, I really love this quote when Jem says, don't see how any jury could convict on what we heard. So the court system hasn't upheld justice and Jem can see that and so can Scout because of the innocence. Um, then the legal system, you know, wouldn't have been enough to uphold um, justice in the face of people like Juror 10 who say things like, I've lived among them all my life. It's only that Juror 8 is able to change their minds. All right, body paragraph one. Assumptions about prejudice and race, ethnicity and class each influence the trials of Tom Robinson and To Kill a Mockingbird and the nameless young boy accused of murder in 12 Angry Men. So what I've given you on each page is a topic sentence, all right, and a linking sentence, so that's highlighted in blue. Then I've given you some 
uh, dot points to talk about and some quotes, okay? So I've given you sort of things that you're going to want to work into your paragraph, so a bit of a plan, if you may. I've given you some comparison, and I've tried to show you what the first half of your paragraph would be, and then how you do that comparison and work it into the second half. All right, so I've given you comparison in pink. You know, in a similar manner to Atticus, Dura 8 is able to cut through the inflammatory accusations made about the accused held on trial. So I've tried to make it really simple here. You might feel confident in going beyond this, all right? But you might just start with this. You might think to yourself, okay, step one, I need to just make sure that I can do everything that's been suggested on these slides by Miss Farrow. Okay, I've got a pretty good essay here. I'm pretty confident with it. Step two, I need to proofread it. Step three, I need to edit it on my own and try and make it more sophisticated. And then once you've done steps one, steps two, you know, and you've had your best shot on your own, then your final step is to send it to your teacher, okay? Once you've really shown us what you can do on your own, then you send it to us because the best feedback you'll get from us is when you've shown us exactly what you can do to the best of your ability, okay? Body paragraph two here, I've laid it out again. Justice is dependent on individuals doing the right thing and using their conscience. The apathy, try and work in some of these key words like apathy, uh, of the jurors in 12 angry men who don't take their responsibility seriously shows it's difficult to access justice. All right, so I said Tom Robinson and Atticus. Each lawyer gets one case in their lifetime. Um, when the children sit in the stands with the coloured folk, um, it exposes the flaws in the prosecution's case because they can't or Gem and Scout can't see how a jury could declare them uh Guilty, of course, Atticus does his best despite the realities, comparison, and then move on to 12 angry men. Body paragraph three, the infallibility of the legal system and passing of principles of justice and challenge. So if you think about the opening scenes of 12 angry men, you're looking at the American courthouse, all right? And remember the image is like really big. It's like, oh my gosh, here's the courthouse. It's this great noble thing. It's all about justice and equality. Um, but then the camera changes and we see the 12 jurors who seem bored and ordinary. So it's like this contrast. It's like, oh, the Supreme Court, the, the thing that upholds justice. But in reality, it's these individual small men that are responsible for upholding justice. So the court system alone isn't enough. All right. And it's juror eight who says that the legal system is, um, it's, it's got holes in it. It's not perfect. And he does that by saying, supposing they're wrong, you know, he he focuses on the gaps left by the prosecution. And that's really important. If you're not sure about this paragraph, I think it's a bit tricky. My advice for you is to read those practice essays. I always find that once I've read a practice essay or two or three or four, things start to come into context a bit more, okay? So it's really important that you do make the time to read those practice essays. Um, and, of course, to think about this on your own. So think about what examples can you think of that maybe I haven't covered or to chat to, you know, Ms. Handel or Mrs. Stanbrook or Ms. Brooks and say, hey, I didn't really understand this whole idea about legal justice. Can we do a bit more on it in class, okay? Then, of course, there's the fact that a court is only as sound as its jury, which is Atticus's quote you know, that the jury ultimately determined the guilt of Tom Robinson, even though he certainly can't seem to have been guilty, all right? And I think I've actually repeated that quote from Jen. Don't see how any jury could convict on what he, we heard, but I'm sure you'll be able to come up with another quote on your own. And then I started a conclusion for you, okay? I've given you the start of a conclusion. You need to finish that conclusion on your own. Can't do everything for you, but hopefully I've put enough on here to give you a rough idea of what we're going for. I hope this makes sense here, 11. Thank you.